How you doing? Thank you for tuning in to this here video presentation by Mr. Larry Whittington, or as he want to be known, Mr. Witt. Mr. Whittington knows all about mathematics, and that is why he founded the Fort Bend Tutorings. Today we're going to learn about word problems. Not the kind where you curse people out, but the mathematical kinds. The kind I don't be understanding at all. Alright, get your ink pen and your pencil ready. Take notes, because you're finna learn from Mr. Witt. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about distance word problems, our seventh word problem video for you. So therefore, I have my equation, distance equals to rate times time, that's exactly what we'll be using as we solve these distance problems. So let's take a look at one. In number one, we have Jasmine drove for three hours in a fog, then increased her speed by 30 miles per hour and drove six more hours. If her total trip was 540 miles, then what was her speed in the fog? So what I like to use is a table, ladies and gentlemen, a three by three most of the time. And what I'll do is I'll start by labeling my columns here. So for the first column, I'll have my rate, then I'll have my time, and then I'll follow up with the distance. For the first row, this will be the time that she spent driving in the fog. And then this next row will be the time that she spent out of the fog. So this will be no fog. All right. And then finally, this last row will be the total. All right. So here I have my table set up already. So we're going to fill in the blanks now. We don't know the rate that she was traveling in the fog, so that's going to be our unknown. That'll be our variable x. We do know that she drove in the fog for three hours. Then, she increased her speed by 30 miles per hour and drove six more hours. So we now know that her rate is going to be 30 miles in addition to what she was already traveling. So that's going to be x plus 30. All right. Then we know that she spent six hours traveling at that rate. In order to find out the third column, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is multiply the first column times the second column. So your rate times time is equivalent to the distance. If you recall the formula that I gave you at the beginning, you'll end up with x times 3, which gives you 3x. Then, multiplying x plus 30 times 6, you'll end up with 6 times x plus 30. So we'll end up with that. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we don't need to know our total rate overall. And if we wanted to give our total time, we could say that it was 9. And we were also given the total distance of her trip, which was 540 miles. It's this last column, ladies and gentlemen, that describes your equation that you need. So I use the table to create the equation needed to solve the problem. So taking the values from this third column, ladies and gentlemen, I can create my equation. For instance, the equation will be 3x plus 6 times x plus 30 has to equal to 540. And that's the equation that I need to solve the problem. All right, just like that. So the first thing we'll do in our equation is we'll go ahead and distribute. So I've got my arrows popping. So I end up with 3x plus 6x plus 180 equals to 540. From there, I'm going to combine my like terms. So 3x plus 6x gives me 9x. I'll bring down this positive 180 as well as my 540. Then I'll be subtracting 180 to both sides of the equal sign, like so. The 180 cancels out. I bring down 9x, which now equals to, this is a 0 here. I had to borrow here. That's a 14 minus 8 gives me a 6. And this will be 360. Mm -hmm. And this is an ugly 9. Yeah, now it's even uglier. From there, we're going to divide both sides by 9. And so we finally figure out that her rate in the fog was 40 miles per hour. So, the next thing we want to do is make sure that we're answering the question here. So let's go back and look at our original problem. It says that Jasmine drove for three hours in the fog, then increased her speed by 30 miles per hour and drove six more hours. If her total trip was 540 miles, then what was her speed in the fog? Her speed in the fog, ladies and gentlemen, is the variable x, and that's going to be 40 miles per hour. So that is our answer for problem number one. Let's go ahead and put a red box around that. I like to put my answers in red boxes. There we go. That's it. 40 miles per hour for problem number one. Let's take a look at our next problem here. In problem number two, ladies and gentlemen, we have Kim and Jeremy are running in the Houston Marathon. Kim runs at seven miles per hour and Jeremy runs at five miles per hour. If they start at the same time, how long will it be before they are half a mile apart? 
All right, well, let's see what happens here. First of all, we're using the distance formula, so I'll label this as my rate, my time, and my distance there. And over here, we have two runners. We have Kim and we have Jeremy. All right, let's see. And what I'll need here is their difference. All right, we need their difference here because they need to be half a mile apart. All right, so we'll need to subtract in order to find that out. So first off, we know that Kim, she runs at seven miles per hour. All right, she's a speed demon. Then we know that Jeremy, he runs at five miles per hour. We don't need to know the rate altogether, so I'll just leave that as a blank. Next, we'll look at our length of time. They started running at the same time, so that means that we can use the same variable x for the length of time that they're running. Next, we'll remember that it's the first column times the second column that equals to the third column. So multiplying 7 times x, that gives us 7x. Then multiplying 5 times x, that gives me 5x. And what I want to keep in mind is that I want the difference in the distance to equal to 1 half of a mile. All right. And by the way, the time will be the same here as well. Same length of time is where this difference will occur. All right. So once again, it will be this last column that will be our equation. Remember that we'll need to subtract Jeremy's distance from Kim's distance in order to equal to a half a mile. Kim is definitely going to be further along from Jeremy because she runs faster. So when we set up our equation, it'll be 7x minus 5x. That'll equal to this one half mile just like that. All right, solving this problem, I'm going to get rid of the fraction first. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So this will be 2 times 7x minus 2 times 5x will equal to 2 times 1 half, just like that. Then, that's an ugly 5, then we'll have 2 times 7x, which is 14x minus 10x will equal to 1. From there, we'll subtract 14x minus 10x gives me 4x, which equals to 1, and then I'll divide both sides by 4. All right, so dividing both sides by 4, you'll end up with 1 fourth hour as a result. All right, so this is going to be a fourth of an hour, or if you wanted to write it in minutes, this will be 15 minutes. Either way, that's how long it will take Kim and Jeremy to be one half mile apart. And there it is. That's the answer, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. All right, done and done. That's problem number two. Next problem coming up is problem number three. Here in problem number three, we have my namesake, Larry, traveled against the wind in a small plane for three hours. The return trip with the wind took two and four tenths hours. Find the speed of the wind if the speed of the plane in still air is 180 miles per hour. All right, so once again, we have a distance problem, so I'm going to start out by labeling my table with my rate, my time, and my distance. For my rows here, I know I'll be going against the wind for some time. And I'll be going with the wind, all right? And I'll have my total here as well. All right, so we know that the rate of the plane in still air is going to be 180 miles per hour. But going against the wind, that's going to take away from our speed. So it'll be 180 minus the speed of the wind. Going with the wind, we're going to be adding the speed of the wind to our speed. So we'll have 180 plus x, all right? Then for our total rate, we won't need that. So we'll just leave that as a blank for now. Now the total amount of time going against the wind was three hours according to the word problem. Then going with the wind, it took us 2.4 hours. All right, so if we were looking for a total, our total time would be 5.4 hours, all right? But we won't need that in this problem here. Continuing on, we'll know that the distance here is always gonna be the first column times the second column. So this is going to be 3 times 180 minus x. Then multiplying the two columns in my second row, I'll end up with 2 and 4 tenths times my 180 plus x. Since the plane was traveling the same distance going to and fro, we won't need this value at all. In fact, we'll just simply be setting the distances here equal to one another. So the plane traveled to a position and then came right back. So the distance is the exact same. So that's why we're able to set these equal to one another. So my equation here will be as follows. It will be 3 times 180 minus x will have to equal to 2 and 4 tenths 
times 180 plus x. All right, so this is what we'll end up with for this equation. So in order to solve our equation, we'll be getting our arrows popping. All right, my favorite property, the distributive property here, okay? So with that known, ladies and gentlemen, we have 3 times 180, which is 540, minus 3x has to equal to 2 and 4 tenths times 180, which is 432, plus 2 and 4 tenths x. All right. From there, I'm going to be subtracting 432 to both sides. That'll be 108 minus 3x, which equals to 2 and 4 tenths x. Then I'll be adding 3x to both sides here. My 3x's cancel out. I bring down my 108, which now equals to 5 and 4 tenths x. And then I'll be dividing both sides by 5 and 4 tenths. So dividing both sides by 5 and 4 tenths, I end up with my result here where x equals to 20 miles per hour. And that was the speed of the wind, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So that's the answer. 20 miles per hour. Done and done. All right. Let's look at our next problem here. Okay, in problem number four, it says if Dr. Kelly rides his bike to his office, he averages nine miles per hour. If he drives his car, he averages 36 miles per hour. His driving is one third hour less than his time bicycling. How far is his office? All right, so once again, we have a distance problem. So this is going to be my rate times the time equals to the distance. And over here, I know that I'm going to have my bike all right, for Dr. Kelly, and versus his car. And let's see here about a total amount here that we may or may not need. So the rate that he averages when he's on his bicycle is going to be 9 miles per hour. So that's where my 9 comes into play. Then it says if he drives his car, he averages 36 miles per hour. So the rate will be 36. And this total here we don't need in this problem. Then. As far as his time is concerned, his driving is one-third hour less than his time bicycling. So we'll say that we don't know the amount of time that it takes for him to bicycle, but we do know that in his car, it's going to take him that time minus a third of an hour. So we have it set up just like that. All right. So it looks like this row will not be needed in this problem, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We do know that the distance to his office will be the same. So in finding out the distance, you simply multiply the first column times the second column. So the rate times time in this case is going to be 9x. For our second row, we'll multiply the rate times the time to find out that it will be 36 times x minus 1 third for that distance. All right. Now remember, this is the distance to his office. That's not changing. So that means that the distance will be the same in this case. So what we'll do, ladies and gentlemen, is we'll set up our equation using that last column again. And this is going to be 9x has to be equivalent to 36 times x minus 1 third. And that's the equation for this problem. OK, so working out our equation, I'll get my arrows popping with the distributive property. And I'll be bringing down 9x, which is equivalent to 36 times x is 36x. And 36 times negative 1 third, that'll give me a negative 12 here. All right. From there, I'm going to be subtracting 36x to both sides, like so. And my 36x's will cancel out. I'll be bringing down a negative 27x, which equals to negative 12. From there, I'm going to be dividing both sides by negative 27. And then I'll be simplifying here. So simplifying, I end up with x equals to a positive. We can go ahead and reduce these by 3. So that gives me 4 ninths, 4 ninths of an hour that it takes Dr. Kelly to ride his bicycle to his office. Remember that the distance for riding his bicycle was 9x, right? So if I were to plug in this value of x into that formula, I can substitute. And 9x can be rewritten as 9 times 4 ninths. And then multiplying this out, your nines will cancel out to end up with a result that is four miles. So Dr. Kelly's office is four miles, and that's it. That's what they wanted to know. Let's go back and take a look at it. 
Remember here, it's asking us how far is his office. So we could have used either 9x, and you could have plugged in that value of 4 ninths here, or you could have plugged in 4 ninths into the second one, which looks a little bit more difficult, and you still would have ended up with that same distance as far as how far his office is. So that does it for problem number four, and that also concludes this video on distance word problems, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate. Peace. We're going to be learning about such things as linear, quadratics, system of equations, tables, mixtures, work, oh Lord, distance, interest, of which I don't have much, investment. This is my favorite one. I'm going to name my grandbaby consecutive integers. <laughs> Algebraic translations and percents. I understand a little bit about my sense. I know that 50% off is pretty good. <laughs>